We looked at the general form of a quadratic, something like this, and we went from there, we completed the square, and out popped magically the quadratic formula. Okay, now, this you'll remember is the general form of a quadratic. The general form. Okay? Because you can express every quadratic in this form for some values of a, b, and c. Okay? Now, you might think, okay, well, what other forms are there? Now, to get to answer that question, I want us to go back to um, when we were looking at straight lines, when we were doing linear functions. Okay? So if that's straight, sorry, if that's a general form of a parabola, of a quadratic, what's the general form of a straight line? And it's very similar, right? Y is equal to Doris. Uh, y equals... Oh, hold on. If I say y oh, equals, oh, oh, I'm already one of the forms. What's the general form? Ax plus by plus c equals zero. Thank you. Okay. So this is general form. And allows us to make a nice easy comparison between any of the different equations. But it doesn't tell us very much about the straight line, right? Which is why we have all of these other forms. So for instance, if I did have y equals, what might you expect on the right hand side? What might be a common thing to see there? Yeah. Mx plus b, yeah. Now this form has a name, right? What's it called? This is general form. Gradient intercept. So we call this one <laughs> gradient <laughs> intercept form. What intercept? It's the y-intercept, right? So in other words, the form that it's in tells you different features. But this wasn't the only form that we learned. Give me another one. Give me oh, another one. Mitsu. Y minus y1 equals x minus y2. Good. So again, a new form, a new name. What's this one called? Point gradient. It's called point gradient form. Right, we've done, we've done gradient intercept, okay? Because x1, y1 is the point it passes through and m is its gradient, okay? Now, you remember the whole point of these was you write it in a particular form based on what you want to do with it, right? Just as a quick note, or what you have. So all of these are geometric features. This one though, despite it not telling you any geometric features, it's astoundingly useful. We use this all the time. What do we use it for? Oh, for like formula like distance. Aha, uh -huh. so for example, if you want the distance between a point and a line, pull it out for me. What is it? What is it? What's going on up top? Okay. Good. Okay. So if you want to do this, you must absolutely have it in general form. Otherwise, you're kind of up the creek without a paddle. Up the what? All right. So, so now here's my avenue into going from here to here. Now, this is the general form of a quadratic, okay? What other forms might be useful? Because this form doesn't tell you, well, it almost doesn't tell you anything geometrically about this problem. It does tell you one thing. Does anyone know what it tells you right away? Uh, no. C, the intercept. It tells you just in the same way that this does, it tells you what the y intercept is. Right? It's just the constant term. Okay? When you move the C to the outside, why doesn't it change sign? Yeah, okay, so. So if I say this, right, if I say that, okay, then really what's going on is like this is, a, this is my equation of a parabola, right? So <clears throat> what you're really saying is this. Right, which we're going to get to in a second. This is shifted which way? Right. Up or down? Oh. It's up or down, right? Because it's Y, down. it's vertical. Up, 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 up. It's up. up. It's up, right? Yay. Just like, okay, we're going to get to this in a second, right? Just like you see over here, I'm going up. Well, if I move to the other side, it's still the same thing. It's still gone up, right? It's just that this clarifies that it's modifying the Y, not any of the X's, okay? Keep thinking about it. Now, like I said, general form, not great for seeing features, okay? A useful form which you try to work toward a lot is a factorized form, right? So, for example, the one we did this morning. Oops, y equals. Now, why is a factorized form useful? What's valuable about it? Right. It gives you the Very good. Um, just like, well, this one, right? You get two intercepts, an x and a y. This one gives you both x intercepts, right? So that's a plus, right? That's why we invest so much energy in your previous years in factorizing, okay? But this, unlike all of these, has a big problem. 
You ever notice? What's the problem with a factorized form? Yeah, me too. It doesn't have a time that will uh, widen or short. Okay, yeah, sure. So, I mean, I could give an example, right? I could say, generally speaking, something like this. Okay, so this has two roots, alpha and beta, right? <clears throat> Excuse me. And that factor of A at the front, just like the factor of A up here, has the function of stretching it out or squashing it down. Okay, so I can account for that. But there's still a bigger problem. Okay, yeah, Aaron? Um, half of them don't have factorized forms. Aha. Uh -huh. I'm interested that you say half. I'm not going to comment on that. I'm just interested by it. I'm just going to say lots of quadratics don't have factorized forms. I'll give you a simple one. Here's the simplest one I can think of. No. You cannot factorize this with any real numbers. Right? There's nothing you can do with it. So it doesn't have a form like this with real numbers. Right? Why is that? What, what is this graph? Because it never touches. Yeah, it doesn't have any real roots, right? It's this guy. Okay? So being that, a whole bunch of quadratics do not have roots, right? Many quadratics cannot exist in that form, right? Whereas Every straight line can be put in one of these forms, right? Because they will all, except for horizontal and verticals, they're a bit special. Uh, they're always going to have a couple of intercepts. They're always going to pass through a pair of points, pass through an infinite number of points. They're always going to have a gradient, etc. right? But this is kind of a whole, right? So that's why it doesn't fall in the category of, oh, these are all the other things we learned. There is one geometric feature, only one, that every single parabola has, and I've drawn it right there. I mean, so your hand was first. Okay, well yeah, it does have a y-intercept, but I kind of already know what that is, right? So I don't need to put it in any special form to get a y-intercept out of that. Do I have to really suggest? Okay, I do have an axis of symmetry, right? Um, I can get that from anywhere, though I suppose like, you can get minus b on 2a out of that, right? And that will still be okay. The really important feature, just on the line of like intercepts over here, or a point, or a gradient, is that guy right oh, there, the vertex. So, every parabola, even if it's like up, down, sideways, it's always going to have a vertex. So, therefore, here's my heading, right, in case you were saving it. Vertex form. Vertices is the plural, vertex is the singular. 